Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Test to Cakes. It's Jen and I'm gonna show you how to make Mighty Little Beam. I'm bringing you another show from Netflix Junior and this is Beam. And I'm going to start by making his little baby body here. I took a nice kind of uh, beigey, coppery color and I made a big, you know, torso shape as you saw and made two cuts to separate his arms because he doesn't wear a shirt and I'm not good at hiding seams, I decided to make his arms and his belly and everything all one piece rather than separate pieces and put them together. So that's why I did that. I rolled them out, um, or excuse me, I rolled it out, cut the two separate pieces for the arms, rounded those off, and I'm trying to make the trunk of the body nice and even. Uh, I ran a lollipop stick through him because I'm going to have him sit him up. And his head is enormous, so you're going to need a way to support all that weight. Okay, so I just have it nice and smooth. I tucked one hand behind his back because I found a picture of him like that that I thought was cute. The other hand is just part, the end of his arm. I'm not adding anything separate, just like I said before. It's all going to be one piece. Just made four little imprints to make five separate fingers. Trimmed off the edges, just pulled them off with my nails there. And because the fingers are kind of wonky looking and everything, I just fold them over and then you don't even see them. You just know that he has fingers and it works. So you can do a little cheat there if you need to. I folded his arm up as you saw there and now I'm going to the legs. He's got chunky little baby legs and I'm going to just be careful when I make the feet. That's really where the detail was for this guy. Um, his feet are very small. I'm using a lollipop stick to roll in the center on one side to make an arch where the arch of his foot is. Just make sure you round off the bottom of his foot where the heel goes. I you know, made an imprint there. For the toes, again the same thing, I just rolled my knife over the top of it for four little separate toes, five toes, four little separations. And I'm going to use, you're going to see right here, I'm going to use the back of my paintbrush to kind of separate the toes from the, the ball of his foot to make it a little more detailed. And with the rounded heel, make sure you have a little arch there and keep it kind of skinny and very small because for some reason he's got very teeny tiny little feet and a big thick chunky leg and you've got a nice little baby leg. And when you put it up against the body like that, it starts to look like I'm making a doll. <laughs> it's kind of creepy, but I guess that's the effect we're going for. He has a, you know, kind of a baby doll looking thing. Okay, so a little bit of gum paste. You saw I cut it at an angle so it can go right onto the side of him. And I have the leg and I'm letting it kind of curve inward a little bit because little babies tend to be bow-legged a bit. Okay, same thing on the other side. Just take your one piece where it's tapered down at the end, bend it over to create the foot. Use your knife blade to make the separation for the toes and then make the foot really small. Separate the toes with the lollipop stick. You know, keep it nice and rounded off at the heel. Roll in the edge for the arch. Keep it nice and skinny, nice and small. Leave the leg nice and fat. He's got, he's got nice thick legs there. And that's it. So it's the legs really aren't hard, but as you can see, it kind of really starts to all come together already. It looks like I stripped down a baby doll. I don't know. I just really was impressed with myself with these legs here, as you can probably tell. The hand, I did put like no real effort into it. Was in the pictures and everything, they don't, he doesn't have a wrist or anything, and his fingers just kind of come up out the end of his hands. But his feet, I noticed, were rather detailed. Okay, here's his little diaper. He's got a little orange diaper. I just rolled out some gum paste, nice and thin trimmed off the top so it's flat and again there's no detail to his diaper either it is just a single piece of cloth there's no seams there's no cuts or anything so that's all I'm doing I made a circle cut there and trimmed out the excess in order to go around his leg and I'm using the knife just to make marks to where it's going to fold into the body again if you're good at you know hiding seams then you can add the arms on later and this part would be so much easier but because I am not good at it, I have to work around everything that's already attached. So that's why I'm making all these crazy little cuts and everything to get this little diaper on him. So I have it going around the, leg, the one leg, back over his hip, his left hip as you see. And then I'm using my ball tool there to just kind of spread the gum paste to fill in his, the cracks around the front of his legs. And under his fist there, I'm using a poking tool, a veining tool to make his little belly button because that does show. And where it's not covered in the back, I'm doing the same thing. Just taking the orange, cutting out a circle where it's going to go over his leg using, I don't know if I mentioned, I'm sorry, if, uh, water to attach it. And just kind of press it into place, <laughs> tuck it up in there. And there you go. He's got his little diaper. So he's looking better already. Now we're going to get to his head, his giant, enormous head. 
and I really don't like characters like this. Um, I'm kind of making a potato shape here. And I'm using my fingers and the ball tool to make imprints for his eyes. His eyes, his nose, and his mouth are set very, very low on his face. He has an enormous head compared to his face, and his eyes are huge as well. And the thing I was saying, I don't like characters like this. I don't like characters that have enormous heads. Like a lot of the Disney and the preschool ones, they all have these melons on them. And they look super cute when you're drawing them, but when you're trying to carve them or sculpt them, you have an enormous amount of weight on top of a small body. So when you're making this, guys, you're going to have to let that body sit overnight. You can't attach the head to it while it's still wet or you're just going to smush everything. It will not work. All right, I'm kind of talking over things. You saw I carved out a little smile. He's got a very small little smile, but he's very happy. Just a little button nose right in the middle. I'm using some white to fill in his eyes. And his eyes are flat along the bottom and then they go up and over at the top. Kind of like an arch or, you know, a doorway, something like that. So making sure it goes up on the sides, flat across the bottom, and nice big curve at the top, and make sure the eyes are huge. <laughs> okay, I'm filling in the mouth. I made uh, with just a little piece of black just to kind of fill it in, make it look a little cleaner, a little nicer and neater inside. I'm going to make his little teeth because he has his two bottom teeth that came in, and all you moms out there know those two bottom teeth. I'm just rolling out some white nice and thin, cut a little tiny rectangle, and just place it on the bottom of his, in the inside of his mouth there. All right, I'm using whatever this sort of ball tool is called, and I'm making indentations in his eyes. That's going to be where the irises sit. This is a bright copper color I'm using, and I'm just filling in the hole. The irises and pupils take up a good amount of the eyes. They're not very small. You know, they cover a lot of the white, maybe half of it, I'd say, in total. Okay, so be generous with them. They don't have to be too small. Little black pupils in the middle. And then his eyes have an outline of black around the top half. Okay, so make it nice and thin on each end, a little thicker in the middle, and wrap it around the top of each eye nice and high. And um, just, yeah, connect it down so it goes down toward the center to the middle length of the eye. Okay, this is his hair. I probably should have used a darker color, so if you guys have a brown that you can mix with some black maybe, you'll get a better color out of it, but I don't know. I still thought it worked out. I just, as you saw, had a kind of a lumpy <laughs> circle, and I folded it over one side of his head, kind of wrap it around. You see how I pinched in where his cheeks are? It kind of wraps around into there and then covers the back. I did it on each side, and you want the top of his head to be a little flattened off. So you see the hair is a little thicker before it comes off the top and then down the side. I did that on purpose to try to square off the top of his head a bit. Um, because of the way the circles came together, there's kind of a wedge there. So that's why I'm trimming this piece so that it comes together as a, in a point. It'll fill it all in. And this will be kind of like the fringe that comes out the front of his hair and, and curls over a little bit. And I discovered, I didn't know that um, this Mighty Little Beam character is actually a pretty popular character. That There's been a lot of spinoffs at different ages and everything. So I guess Netflix was getting in on the action. And it's a cute little show. <laughs> they don't talk, though, so that kind of threw me off the first time I watched it. It's just like little grunts and pointing and that kind of thing. So it's a very simple little show. All right, so even with the little fringe, he already is coming together. Very nicely. He's less creepy, cupid doll looking. I made a little bit of a part you can see right there with my knife blade. I'm just adding some details of hair. Not pressing it through all the way. Just making some lines and some marks just to kind of make his hair look nicer. You can see I'm not the best with matching up the seams, but that's okay because you guys out there are probably better. And you'll do a better job than me anyway, so it's all good, right? Now his eyebrows are little teeny tiny. They're just little elongated teardrops, basically, and they sit super high on his forehead. They're the same color brown. This is his little mark in the center of his forehead. It is actually a burgundy color. It's hard to see, but it is uh, colored, and it's shaped kind of like an elongated teardrop, too. The top of it centers about between the eyebrows, so just watch your placement there. This is his necklace that he wears. I use a brown edible food coloring marker. And I just cut out a little piece of brown out of gum paste for the medallion around his neck. And you can see I also put it on his wrist. I used the brown marker to color a band around his wrist. And I realized I made a mistake. It's not supposed to be there. It's actually supposed to be on his arm, on his upper arm. 
So you're going to see me put it there. And then I'm going to be like, oh, shoot, that doesn't go there. It goes here. You see what I did? If you're using food coloring markers, it comes off real easy. Just wet your paintbrush and just start mopping over it and it'll clean right up. So it's not a big deal and it comes right off. You just get a paper towel to suck up all the water and it'll dry and it'll be just fine. So don't worry about that kind of thing. His ears are just balls of the same color beige and, and tan that I used before. Press down on one side to cup it out like a letter C. Make him real small and low on his cheeks. You see where the hairline is and that's where I put him. I'm using some brown marker again around his eyes just to kind of wet it out and make him a little darker. I'm using just water on the paintbrush to spread the color around a little bit. Make him wetter and shiny. I went over the pupils as well because, you know, why not, right? Make him a little, a little more glassy looking. A little dot of white on each eye for a little highlight. And there you go. Now, like I said, let it sit overnight. Both these things have to sit overnight, okay? Do not rush it. When it hardens enough the next day, though, to support the weight, stick it on there. And there you go. You got your mighty little beam. Isn't he cute? He actually is pretty darn cute, I gotta say. Okay, so please check out my other videos. Please like and subscribe. If you see any tools that or anything that you needed and I didn't show you already, you can check the link down below to purchase your own. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.